brain. Um, a lot of people, I was gonna show you, there's some information that I don't mean to show, but as I'm doing stuff, I think it's imperative that I let people know. This one has a lot of weep holes. They used to only have four, now this one has six. Um, so you have a lot of ways of aggress for water. Everybody talks about a pre-salt being done and all that stuff, and I'm not even gonna debate that issue anymore because we're waterproofing the entire pan surface now. So so to have a pre-slope is, is a moot and irrelevant issue. But anyway, um, if we weren't waterproofing and water did get into your pan, look at all the ways of aggress that this shower has for water to get out. Um, that this pan, as it were, for water to get out, you have about an eighth of an inch, maybe maybe a little better than that, of, of room by the time you're flush with this bottom flange for water to evacuate. In fact, in fact, not even that, about an eighth of an inch, because you've got troughs right here, and the troughs lead right to these weep holes, um, which is a cool design. So the troughs lead to these weep holes, and then these weep holes, and then these little, little cutouts here for your bolts. Um, and then you have the inside portion here where there's cutouts on the threads. So when you screw your barrel down, water can still evacuate through here. There's a lot of ways for water to evacuate. Um, when you, and a lot of people, oh, put pebbles around the weep hole so you don't clog them. Let me tell you something. This is not something that I'm guessing at. This is something I know 100% and I could do a mock-up. I'm not going to because I already know. Sand, mortar mix, sand and cement get into these areas. And, oh, I had clogged weep holes, I had clogged weep holes. There's no way you clog a weep hole with sand. There's no way. Look at the beach. Go to the beach sometime. The only difference is that the beach, you don't have any cement. But the cement is still porous, just like the sand is, and water is going to get through here very, very easily. Very easily. Water will get through all of these areas very easily with a sand topping mix involved. If you put rocks in there, pebbles or whatever, and that pebble happens to be the same size or just slightly larger, and you're tapping down all your mortar mix and all that stuff, you're pushing a rock inside there, which is very dense. It's not as porous as sand is. So you could potentially clog your weep holes. Even if you use spacers, you know, rubber spacers, you could have one flat sitting right there and not even know it. And a rubber spacer is definitely going to clog that, clog that weep hole. If one gets caught in here, you're going to to cut down on how much room you have for water to evacuate. There's a lot of smart guys out there, but they fail to use common sense when it comes to weep holes and how you clog things, and there's just no way. It cannot be proven to me. In fact, just the opposite. Um, I did a mock-up, and a guy named Isaac Ostrom did a, a mock-up where, where he poured water into a shower pan that was, you know, two or three inches thick around the perimeter, and then obviously sloped down to the drain and all that stuff. And he poured water in there to show that he poured his water into that water mix. It all evacuated. So you're going to tell me that this much mortar, water could get through and evacuate, as he showed in his experiment. Try to keep it from splashing out. So that's all from the weep holes. There is no water going through the top of that drain. And you can see it all just pouring out into the bucket now. So obviously some of the water is gonna get uh, caught up in the mortar. You can see even my, my fat mud curb is gonna take in a little bit of water. But it's already starting, you can see here. See that water go away? So this is the way these pans are designed to work. So, there we go. The drainage mat is like completely dry. That's fascinating. There is no water on this drainage mat at all. So that water goes down through the deck mud, hits this drainage mat, goes through this fleece, 
and let me peel this back. So that's the amount of water that you are seeing on this pan liner. Look at that. There's dr li literally drops of water. Because he cheated on that experiment and used an outdoor type of mat that uh, would allow water to go down to the pan liner. Nobody uses that mat in the shower. So that was actually a flawed experiment that he did. So don't get focused on that. It, but anyway, the point being is that he has this much mortar where he poured water in. And water just like literally went down into the mortar. It's the same as this. It's the same mortar here. So you have an eighth of an inch of mortar, which is about the thickness of this flange. An eighth of an inch of mortar. An eighth of an inch of mortar here, right? That water can't get through because you clogged it? Get the heck. I don't cuss on my video, sorry. On the previous portion, I said I was not going to do um, a mock-up or a demo of this, but I decided I would, mainly because I already have it. Uh, this is something I've been using for a while, but you can see clearly that the weep holes are clogged. I am just below that bottom line there, and most of it, if not all of it, should come out. I said that all of it should come out. You can clearly hear it coming out. Um, not all of it will come out. There'll be a few puddles lingering around. But yeah. And then I spilled some too. Very definitively coming out with the weep holes clogged. Which I already knew. But it is happening quickly. And I won't bore you. reason, the reason, the reason that this still evacuates water ever, ever so slowly, I've explained on a couple other videos I have, most of these bottom flanges, these locking flanges, not only have the troughs at the top with this little eighth of an inch, but also there's a reverse trough at the bottom. So, Slowly but surely, even the excess water you can hear it dripping out very definitively. <laughs> Which I already knew also, I knew that also. Anyway, I'm going to take all this water out of here, put it back in the bucket. close to where we started. In fact, I think we're right at where we started. So, for somebody who says that they like experiments because they teach people things, um, take heed to my experiments. Mine are definitive. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're going to call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support. 